Hi, this is Ian. Uh, thanks very much for all the questions you sent in on uh, energy use in homes. A question that a lot of you had was, how do I figure out where all the energy is going? Which appliances are using it? And so what I recommend is that you get something like this. There's, there's a few different varieties, uh, different brands and so on. These are things where you can plug in whatever you're interested in knowing about. You plug it in the wall and this little display will tell you how much energy you're using. You can go around your house, plug everything through these and get a pretty good idea about what's going on. Uh, Mark asked how much energy you might save by replacing all the windows in your home. And unfortunately, the short answer is uh, not enough to pay for the windows. You should replace windows for aesthetic reasons because you don't like the look of the old ones. Or maybe you've got old uh, wood frame windows that are starting to rot out. Or if you're doing a major rehab on your home, it's a good idea. But the payback really just isn't there. Um, I think new windows are great and modern windows certainly perform a lot better than old ones. Uh, but don't do it for the money you think you'll save. Several people, such as Annette, asked about uh, photovoltaic systems to generate electricity. Um, you've probably seen these put up on people's roofs in your neighborhood. Now, they are quite expensive. And this is the question, you know, is it really worth it? And the answer to that is it depends a bit. Um, in many places in the country, your local utilities have some pretty good rebates. I know we have great ones here in California still. There's also federal tax credits and so on that will reduce the price. But probably the best way to do it is actually to uh, lease the uh, panels that go on your roof. There are several companies uh, throughout the country that are doing this. These companies also will do home energy audits for you as well. But I like the leases because you don't have to put any money down. You just basically replace the energy bill that you gave to the electric company or the gas company with a bill to pay for the lease for the PV panels on your roof. Another good question that we got is about what you should do when your water heater fails. Should you just replace the old one you had with one that's just like it but new? And uh, the answer is, it depends. Um, if you already have what I would call the infrastructure there, that is either a large enough gas line, if you think about going with a tankless water heater, or you have the right electrical wiring for your home for, for an electric water heater, you can, you can think about doing some swaps, but often in a home, you don't have that option and like for like is all you're gonna be able to do. Certainly that's what I did in my house recently when I had to replace my water heater. So uh, my advice here is a little more subtle, a little more complicated because there's no one answer. You, it'll depend on the house that you have, uh, whether or not you have all the utilities there and so on. And you probably have to work with a contractor who's smart if you are gonna do switching from gas to electric, for example, or even if you're going to choose one of the newer technologies such as a heat pump water heater, which is way better than a normal electric resistance water heater, but you're gonna to have to install it in a slightly different way. And so there's a lot of extra expense with some of those things. Paul wrote in with a question where he had had a home energy audit done and he found out his house is pretty leaky. And he also has some comfort problem. It's always cold downstairs and warm upstairs in his home. And I think his home energy audit was pretty much right on the money. He's got a leaky house. He's got cold air coming in downstairs and the warm air leaving through the upstairs. What he needs to do is to seal up his house. And he asked about, you know, what are, the, what are some of the best ways to do it? And really, what you need to do is to find out, first of all, where all the large holes are. By large holes, I mean looking at electrical and plumbing penetrations, or if you have um, a flue or a fireplace in your house, looking up in the attic around there and sealing up those things. And remember, you should definitely do that before you fill your attic with insulation. Definitely do the air sealing first. Um, lower down in the house, it depends a bit on what sort of a foundation that you have. But often we find that homes that are built on crawl spaces have a lot of leakage through the floor. Um, air comes into the crawl space, up through the floor and into your home. And then you've got a couple of options. One is to seal up the floor itself. Um, the other, which is becoming increasingly popular, is to actually seal up the crawl space and bring it inside. This also means you'll be insulating the crawl space and so on. But um, there's one important thing to be aware of. If you're going to seal up your crawl space, you'd better cover up the dirt in your crawl space and also make sure you've got really good drainage around your home because you don't want to have a lot of moisture in that crawl space because that will lead to terrible moisture problems and condensation, not just in the crawl space, but in your home too. So sealing up your crawl space is okay, but you better be careful about controlling the moisture while you're at it. Marisa asked if you can save energy by reducing water consumption in your home. And the answer is absolutely, uh, particularly with, with hot water. If you have some low flow uh, faucets and go in your shower and put a low flow shower in it, you might be able to reduce the amount of hot water you use by about half. And of course that translates directly into using less energy to heat the water in your home. There's also the issue of what about all the cold water that you don't pay to heat, but you might be able to save uh, a lot of your cold water too. Well, that gets into a bigger picture issue. For example, here in California, we use something like 5% of all the electricity in the state is used to move water around the state. 
So when you're saving cold water, you're also saving all the energy in that infrastructure in your state to move the cold water around. Haley asked a great question about what's the single biggest energy user in your home. And pretty much all the time, it's the energy you use to heat and cool your home. And the best way to address this is to air seal your home and insulate it. And also, a lot of homes use a forced air system to blow air around for heating and cooling. And you'd better seal up those ducts and insulate them too. Uh, thanks again for all of your really, really great questions. Uh, there's a lot more information out there, and we're going to put some really good URLs that I recommend that you have a look at in the description of this video. Thank you.